Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently Tuesday the 16th of June and I am reading Nightfall 2 by Isaac Asimov and I have such an ungodly amount of work, you would not even believe it. I'm very, very stressed at the moment. My friend Tony sent me his band's vinyl. Hello, it's Thursday. So yesterday, it was a very busy day. I basically worked all day. I uh, went along to a meeting at the Arts Centre, so that was good. Um, and then I saw a friend in the evening, so had a few drinks. Uh, and then I've been working all day today, so it's now 6pm, so it's finally knocking off time. So it's time for me to be vaguely productive, at the very least. So I'm just here, just looking at my uh, radio show, because I need to do a few bits there. I've got lots of haul to film, because i got like 50 books in the post today, because I've been buying them to sell on. So I've got, well this is my pile of unread ones, so I've got some New Horrible Histories ones that I haven't read yet. And some F. Scott Fitzgerald that I haven't read. But then there's also a bunch of these horrible histories that I have read, and some Agatha Christie as well. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm just coming to the end of Nightfall 2 by Isaac Asimov, so this is just ten of his short stories. Basically he published what he considered to be his best short stories, he published 20 of them, uh, in a collection called Nightfall that was hardback, and then for whatever reason they didn't have the technical capacity to publish it as just one paperback. So they published it as two, uh, two paperbacks instead. Sorry, I'm just RMS normalising, don't mind me. Uh, so yeah, instead of having one collection of 20 stories, it's uh, two collections of 10. But I really enjoyed it. This last one's kind of funny because it was based on a prompt that was given by Playboy and they give, gave it to a bunch of different writers, uh, Asimov being just one of them. And then they didn't end up going with his story and they sort of drafted someone in to replace him. But due to the timescales of publishing, he basically got it, he got it published in Science Fiction and Fantasy magazine 18 months before Play, uh, Playboy did their version. And so he was saying he was tempted to call in and pretend like, hey, you stole, uh, oh sorry, no, he's tempted to write a letter in under a fake name being like, you stole that plot from an Isaac Asimov story. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm probably going to pick up one of these Horrible Histories books next. Maybe, uh, maybe Rotten Rulers, we might do that, learn a bit of history. Big bully bossy boots, evil tyrant. Yeah, should be good. So I think that's it for vlog updates. I haven't done any music for a few days. I've just been so busy. But I have finally got my list of work down now. To I've got six jobs I can currently do. And the plan is to try and work a nine to five, a proper nine to five, which I'm really bad at. But I did get up at 9 a.m. today, so I'm gonna try and get up at 9 a.m. again tomorrow. And then I think the key is to just keep that going over the weekend as well, because if I stop, that's when it all goes a bit wrong, you know? Oh, hey Biggie, you got right in the way. We're watching Jacksepticeye play The Last of Us. Okay, so it's Friday, Friday the 19th of June. Uh, the evening, I'm very tired, but I've been sleeping okay. I've got this big spot on my nose here, and I've also got what might be an ingrowing to uh, fingernail. So I'm just treating both of them with sort of salty water um, and hoping for the best, you know? So that's kind of what's happening at the moment. Uh, yeah, Biggie's here. I finished reading... Um, it was called Rulers, Rotten Rulers by Terry Deary, uh, which is a horrible histories book. Watch out, Biggie, you're right in the way. So this is one of the ones that I got with like my bundles on eBay. Rotten Rulers, there we go. And um, it was pretty good. The only things I would say is that like, there was a point in this, For he made a joke about the earth being flat, for example. And um, I think that's irresponsible in a children's book. Because also he just did, it was like deadpan. It was just like, oh, and by the way, the earth's flat. And I'm like, kids might read that and think the Earth actually is flat, so that's kind of irresponsible. And then that made me doubt the accuracy of other information. For example, there was a Tsar, I think it was a Tsar, who apparently had 117,000 books in like 900 AD or whatever. And uh, his camels all carried his library around with him everywhere he went. And they'd been drained to write in a oh, single file uh, in alphabetical order. So that's cool if it's true. But yeah, overall, biggie. Overall, I gave it a 4 out of 5. It was pretty good. So now, I'm reading By Jupiter and Other Stories by Isaac Asimov. So, um, yeah, I think there are 20 stories in this. And actually, it's kind of weird because there are 20 stories and the, the, the rear summarises four of them. 
but it doesn't make it immediately clear that those are only four of 20, you know. But I am looking forward to those title stories, so it should be good. But I'm on, like, the second story so far, so I don't... There's not much I can say otherwise, other than that... There's not much that I can say other than that Asimov is always brilliant, you know? I'm watching Donnie Darko. It's little old Patrick Swayze. I've now watched, over the last few days, I've watched all of the Karate Kid movies. All of the Indiana Jones movies. I think that's it. So I'm going to watch Donnie Darko, and then I also have Willow to watch. When I'm back in Tamworth, my mum wants to watch Muppet Treasure Island with me as well. Um, I'm currently still reading By Jupiter and Other Stories by Isaac Asimov. It's quite good. It's not amazing. It's actually a noticeable dip in quality after reading Nightfall 2, which I read recently. But he did say with that that he'd specifically tried to bring together the very best of his uh, stories. So, you know, kind of can't fault him too much. Um, yeah, but I am quite enjoying it. I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. Probably another one of the Horrible Histories books. I'll probably alternate between Asimov and Horrible Histories, I guess. And then we have Fitzgerald. Uh, when I'm going next week, I'm going to go and see my mum um, in Tamworth, in the old homeland. But she got me a copy of If It Bleeds for my birthday. And I normally, when I go and visit my mum or when I spend any time travelling, I take the longest unread book I have with me. If It Bleeds isn't actually my longest unread book, but I'm going to take If It Bleeds and Hearts in Atlantis, which have been putting off for ages, uh, both by Stephen King. Uh, and Hearts, Hearts in Atlantis, I've had that one for about four years now and just never got to it but the movie's on Netflix and I've got nothing else to watch on Netflix so I want to read the novel so I can read the movie I still have this big old spot on my nose I also have an ingrowing fingernail on this finger I think I'm not swearing at you sorry I'm trying to show you my finger it's it's swelled up and stuff so yesterday I had that just soaking in a little salt bath but it means like when I'm using my mouse now on my computer I have to hold it like I have to hold it like this and I have to type like this as well, it's ridiculous. But yeah, so that's where I'm at. I don't think I have anything else for you really. I haven't, uh, I'm just, oh, I'm so stressed. I'm trying to get everything done. Um, I've caught up with my work-ish to the point at which like, I mean, I have stuff that I need to immediately do, but I don't have stuff that I'm getting shouted at for missing deadlines, so that's good. So I'm hoping to be able to get a bit of work done. But I also need to go to the post office um, and to the shop uh, I have some booktube stuff to do I've got to clean my house oh, I'm so tired but I did get some good sleep I slept for like 10 hours it's about oh god now we are 10 hours is quite good for me because I don't I think I've had like 3 or 4 hours the last few nights uh, so yeah, that's where we're at. I've been listing some more eBay stuff as well. Okay, so I have uh, a review. I have two reviews to do. I have my I have my review of Nightfall to film in its entirety, and then I can make a. St oh, actually, I was going to do a review of this book, but now I'm not going to because literally, I think I've tabbed out one thing and I'm on page seventy-two. So it's about a third. Of the <laughs> about a third of the way through and I've only tabbed out one thing so I guess there's not much point in doing that one so I'll just review this I have a tag to do and I have a radio show to record oh, I am watching American Pie 2 I tell you what man I watched the first American Pie earlier and it's such an <laughs> incel film like the plot of it is very incel one of them even complains at one point about being celibate against their wishes and I'm like you mean in incel um, but yeah, it's still a good movie, still very funny. It's just like now when you watch it, some of the stuff, like when Jim live streams Nadia getting changed, you're like, in 2020, mate, you would be getting a serious sexual assault charge there. Um, Biggie's here. He's not very well today, are you, Biggie? You're not doing very well. I was saying hello to the camera. He's been very quiet. I haven't really heard you, have I, buddy? I haven't heard you. I haven't been making much noise. He's been a bit... A bit grumpy with me because we had to uh, we had to shave a bit of you, didn't we, Biggie? Because you've got some fur clots. You've got some fur clots, and uh, so we tried to give him a little bit of a shave, which he's not too happy about. Um, he was sick last night, so I've got some sick on the floor. I've got to clean up because of you, Biggs. And um, he also didn't have any water earlier. 
he drank it all. So I gave him some more and he drank it all down. But he just... I'm a bit stressed, a bit anxious about you, but I'm worried about you. Especially because I'm supposed to be going away for a couple of days. I'll be here tomorrow and then the day after that I'm going away for... Not quite 72 hours, but for a little while. I'm going to go see Mama Cobain. So yeah, when I go and see my mum. We've got some tickets now to go and see. So we're going to go to Trenton Monkey Forest, where we can go and see some monkeys. And um, we're going to go to the National Arboretum as well, where we can see... Um, there's lots of nature there and trees and stuff and um, war memorials and stuff. So they're all ticketed at the moment. They're reopening, but you can go along if you get tickets in advance, which he's done. But yeah, I'm just a bit stressed about you, buddy, because normally he'd be sitting there licking himself and he'd purr, like I'd touch him and he'd go, me. But he's just silent, you know? You see, dead silent. Oh, wait a minute. You having a purry purr now, Biggie? You having a purry purr? Good. That means he's, you know, can't be too unhappy if he's purring. He's off now anyway, I don't know where he's going. So yeah, that's where we're at. I've uh, just finished reading By Jupiter by Isaac Asimov. I've got to be honest, this wasn't a particularly good selection of short stories. Um, Oh yeah, he's got a plate of food now. I brought, I put, I've given him a little plate of food in here because he just brings his food through here all the time anyway. So I thought he might like that, and I might bring his water through here as well. I haven't figured out what to do with that yet. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed by Jupiter and other stories, um, but it wasn't great and it wasn't Asimov's best. So probably like three point seven five out of five, and it's probably the weakest of his books that I've read actually. Um, but I think in part that's because he didn't really look at like futuristic technologies and stuff, which is what really interests me about his work, you know? Um, and like, well, sorry, no, that's not fair. It's not that. The, the, the issue for me was that like, I really enjoy when he's doing his robot stories um, because he looks at what it means to be human, you know? And whether a robot can count as human and all this stuff. And, and obviously they're just, that wasn't here. So yeah, shame really. And now I'm reading Terry Deary, Dark Knights and Dingy Castles. So this is a horrible histories book. Bought a little um, job lot of these. So I've got that. And then next I'm probably going to read Horrible Histories Ireland. And then it should be time for me to go and visit my mum in Tamworth. Um, so I will probably then take If It Bleeds by Stephen King. And also um, Hearts in Atlantis as well. So yeah, but I've run out of other stuff to watch, hence the American Pie movies. I've got movies one till seven, and then I think there was an eighth, and then the reunion movie, and I don't have either of those. So I'm just going to watch one through seven. Might even just watch one through four, and even the fourth one wasn't that good, but then it gets really bad. Oh, I also have an ingrowing fingernail, still. Um, I popped it earlier, it was really gross, but it seems to be doing better now. It's certainly less painful, and there's less swelling. Um, so I'm just hoping that I successfully managed to bring my nail out from underneath it I don't know like I, it still hurts to touch it now but I can touch it where I couldn't before so that's good and I still have this spot on my nose as well Christ hopefully this doesn't become infected as well as this so that's where we're at it's Sunday I didn't do my live stream because reasons um, you know sleeping pattern and stuff and also my finger hurts I made some um, sweet pepper fajitas earlier they were lovely been cracking on with some work and some art centre stuff. Working on my next radio show, eBay stuff. So about 100 quid worth of stuff in the last day, so that's good. Um, yeah. Just cracking on, just cracking on. That's it, that's all I got for you. So how you feeling, cat? You feeling a little bit better? Look at all your fluff on the floor from where we trimmed you. And my guitars, they look cool at least. Need to sweep the floor, don't I, Biggs? Yeah. All oh, right, we're watching Red Dwarf today. Aren't we, Biggie? Someone's in a happier mood today, I think. Is he not purring very much? You're gonna give me a purr? Okay. Come on, then, Biggs. Come and have a sit on me lap. So here he comes. Oh, you're just using me as a bridge, are you? He's come to sit by a Dark Nights and Dingy Castles, which is still my current read. Um, I'm still enjoying it very much, and I've had a lot of books today. I'll show you that. So I had 
We've got all these Agatha Christie's here and a bunch of ladybirds. And then, as well as those, I have this stack here. This is the ones I'm actually going to read. Those ones there I'm just going to sell. So we're very excited about that, aren't we, Biggs? And it puts my... Puts my currently reading back up to 51. It will go down to 50 once I read the Horrible Histories books. But um, a lot of these new ones are quite small. So I'm probably going to read a few more of these small ones before I head off to Tamworth to go and see my mum. Um, and then while I'm away, I'm going to read If It Bleeds and um, Hearts in Atlantis. So that's good. And I've got a bid on as well. I'm currently winning this bit. Well, I can't see it because Cat's big shift because he's sitting on the keyboard, aren't you, Biggie? So yeah, I'm, I'm winning a job lot of 55 Agatha Christie books, the old vintage ones. I'm winning it for $24.99 plus $9.50 postage. I'm the only bidder. There's 28 minutes left, so hopefully no one's going to try and try and um, pit me to the post or whatever. Biggie's got this little ball patch in his fur because of where I've been trying to trim him. You can kind of see it over there. Oh, no, he doesn't want you to see it. He's like, nah. There it is. There it is. And you still got a lump there as well. But, um, yeah, it was making me really anxious yesterday because obviously lumps aren't good, but I'm pretty sure it's a lump of hair. And he doesn't seem to be, he doesn't, like, he doesn't like it when I try and attack it and try and trim his chunks out of the way. But, um, he does benefit afterwards from it, I guess, so. And it's summertime as well, Biggie, so it can't hurt to have a little bit less fur somewhere. Hey, it'll grow back. So yeah, that's where we're at um, today. I went to my friend Dave's house very quickly because um, he's doing a musical. So he got me to film some bits for his musical. So I did those. Um, like literally just some dialogue bits. And um, I need to do some recording for him later really this evening because we've got some projects on the go. Uh, we've secured our producer now for our new album too. So uh, we're going to have a 14 track album. So I've, we've both got some more tracks to work on really. Um, so that's all good and uh, yeah just being productive really hopefully gonna go and see my mum tomorrow I also went to the post office because I'd got a bunch of parcels that were too big for me to um, drop off in a post box so those are going out now yeah it's all good really it's all good so yeah I'm gonna go and get back to work I made some stew with the remainder of stuff in my fridge you got some onion sprinkles on top. Not stew, soup, tomato soup. It's gonna be banging. Right, eat, eat time now. Hello, uh, this is gonna start out as vlog, but it's also gonna be the footage I'm gonna use for my wrap up. Because I'm lazy and I've been reading these little books and they don't really need wrapping up twice, you know? Um, so I've been working through those ladybird books that I mentioned. Uh, other update as well, it's currently 20 to one in the morning. Uh, Tomorrow I'm heading to Tamworth to see my mum. That's kind of why I'm reading some of these little books now to sort of get them out of the way uh, so that I can focus on if it bleeds during my journey, uh, which is fine. But I haven't finished doing all my shit yet. I'm just looking at what's on my list of things to do here. Actually, it's not too bad. I've spent ages finishing off my washing up. Um, so now that's all done. I've got a couple of things I need to hand wash in the sink. I need to try and fix that sink through there. And I need to sweep the floors as well. But I don't know, I might stay up all night. Um, we'll see. But anyway, the books. So we'll start with the two He-Man books. Um, and I'm going to review these as one because they're essentially the same. So we've got uh, He-Man and the Lost Dragon and He-Man Meets the Beast. And uh, they're both by, what's his name, John Smart? John Proud? John Grant, I was close enough. I missed He-Man the first time around, so I never really was part of the, the He-Man fan base or anything like that. So it's kind of been cool to experience them like this, really. Um, I have enjoyed them. I would probably give them both a pretty solid 4 out of 5, and they're like cute little books for collectors, I would say, for sure. So that's those two. All right, then we have Bedtime Rhymes. So this is... I think compiled and illustrated, yeah, so chosen by Ron Randall, or possibly Ronnie Randall, I don't know, illustrated by Peter Stevenson, and um, yeah, these are really cute, there are a few here that I particularly like, so these are all like little, just little rhymes that are designed for you to read to kids at bed, uh, bedtime, so here we have, up the wooden hill to Bedfordshire, which is a phrase I've heard before, my mum used to say that, but then apparently the next line is, down sheet lane to blanket fair, um, you know, and we've got like, hush little baby, don't say a word, Papa's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Uh, hush your baby on the treetop. 
See, this is the thing is, that it, it's not very clear, like, it's got this rhymes in the book thing at the introduction, but it goes from one rhyme to another, and sometimes it's difficult to realise when multiple pages go together, I guess. So it reads like a one long serialised poem of all these other poems put together. But that is kind of cool, because you could read this whole thing to a kid in bed for ten minutes, you know, and they'd fall asleep, so... For its purpose, it's pretty good. For me, actually a 3.5 out of 5. Um, the last Ladybird book, because these are all Ladybird books, and the last one of these that I read, I read it earlier this month, it was in this wrap-up, the, um, the Dancing Rhymes. And that was disappointing, because I don't dance. Um, but yeah, I do sleep, so I could relate to this. Even though I'm not a child. And then we have a Dennis the Menace, A Splashing Time. This doesn't even have like an author credited. It's just a, a Ladybird Books thing. Obviously, I assume that they got permission from uh, the Beano to do it. Um, I mean, it's clearly like the original Beano. Yeah, that's published uh, published by Ladybird Books. Why did I just see DC Thompson? Oh, text and illustrations, DC Thompson and Co. Limited. So DC Thompson actually used to be a client of mine. We used to do some pay per click advertising for them. But they're. Um, uh, like a, uh, they publish loads of different specialist newspapers and magazines and whatnot, and they own the Beano, so that's quite cool. It like it is obviously illustrated and written as well, because I thought maybe Ladybird might have written it and uh, they might have just got Beano to illustrate it. But no, it'd be, it'd be like the original team working on it. I mean, to be fair, I've just opened this up straight away, and we've got take that red skin. I mean, it hasn't aged well, and um, we've got this thing of like throughout all the. Dennis the Menace things, I guess, of Walter the Softy. So in here he's being a softy because he's using feminine hygiene project products. I made that sound like he's using tampons. Um, he was using, uh, what does it say here? His lovely flower fragrance bath soap. Hmm, sounds nice. So yeah, uh, 3.75 out of 5 for this one, purely really because of the uh, nostalgia factor. All right, another couple more that I've read. So I read Return to Neverland, Peter Pan. Um, I actually feel like the story in this I've read before, so I must, because I've read Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, but I'm guessing that I've also read whatever J.M. Barry this novel this is based on. This doesn't come with an author listed or whatever, but it was quite good. Um, it was nice to go back to the world of Peter Pan. I would say this is probably, for me, it's like a 3.75 out of 5, but if you're really into Peter Pan, you're obviously going to, you're going to love this. And then we have Treasure Island, so this is retold by Joyce Faraday. Um, what's interesting about this is that I've read Treasure Island, I've read it a few times actually, and I don't really like it. I love the story, and I actually really like Muppet Treasure Island, I just don't like Treasure Island. And so I think it's something to do with Stevenson's writing style, and I had the same thing here, where I really enjoyed the story, but because it wasn't written by Stevenson. So this one, this one for me has got to be a 4.25 out of 5, and um, honestly, if you're interested in Treasure Island, maybe read this. Um, it was a, uh, you know... Or I would at least get it on an audio book. But yeah, not really a Stevenson fan, unfortunately. But this this was cracking. All right, so I've got two more books to update you on. So the first one of these is House of Weeds, poetry by Amy Charlotte Keane, illustrated by Jack Warlington. And uh, it's by Fly on the Wall Press. I was sent this copy here. Uh, let's read this. Uh, the, the gimmick here, I say gimmick, you know. It's all illustrated, which is all very cool. And um, it's all based on, like... Um, you're going to help me, Biggie. It's all based on different flowers and stuff. So this poem's called po Polypodium Vulgari, uh, Fern. As a youth, you'd never wish to be the creep, that shady character. The moment you realise I am him, you twig and lift, black stalks outgrowing. It smacks you like a heavy spade, your childhood essentially decimated. Yet you creep further to the dullest, harshest corners and thrive there. It's a shame, but own it. Perhaps it was predestined, like an astrologer's surprise birthday buffet. I mean, someone has to be me. How would the rest of you feel normal? So yeah, I quite enjoyed this, probably like a 3.75 out of 5. I particularly enjoyed the illustrations and, um, you know, the flowery theme. I thought that was very cool. And um, yeah, I, uh, I, I've really enjoyed, to be honest, everything that uh, Fly on the Wall Press has sent me. This one's interesting because I didn't initially enjoy it that much. And then um, once I got stuck into it, I really started to enjoy it, you know? And then we have Self-Portrait by Elizabeth Horam, which is basically uh, poetry based on the life of Frida Kahlo, which is very cool. And um, yeah, the interesting thing about this is quite a bit of it is written in Spanish, but then the author does very kindly provide us with the English translations as well. And um, yeah, it was an interesting one to read. I enjoyed the poems. I've read Elizabeth Horan's stuff before. 
Um, she's previously written a book called Alcoholic Betty, which was about her struggles with alcohol abuse. And so I imagine she kind of um, sort of sees a lot of herself in Frida Kahlo, I guess, with a lot of Kahlo's struggles. So again, probably another 3.75, maybe even a 4 out of 5 with this one. Now I'm watching Plots and Points play Last of Us. Oh, and it's 3.35 in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'm getting somewhere though. The bedroom's now done. Still have the living room and bits over there to do, but I think I'm on time. If I stay up all night, I can leave in the morning. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.